Hey everyone, it's Scott. Uh, we've got a rainy day today, kind of yucky outside. Not really much work to do in the garden on a day like today. I need a project to do, so I thought I'd put together a rainy day. Uh, this one is on this wheelbarrow behind me. It's a eight cubic foot uh, True Temper Big Eight wheelbarrow, and it's got a plastic uh, bin in it, a uh, plastic tub. Uh, I've made some modifications to it over the years. Uh, the reason I got it originally is because it had the double wheel set. And uh, for me, w anything that's going to help my back is going to be something that I'm, I'm going to be interested in. And I could still take big loads with this without the single wheel one that would help me, you know, it kind of forced me to tip one way or the other and compensate. And this one's easier on the core, it's easier on the spinal column, and I found I can take heavier loads and it's easier. Uh, so one of the upgrades I made was to get these hard tires, uh, these non-flat tires, and I put those on and it's been worth the money. I've replaced a lot of tires over the years. And I just got some PVC uh, here to put over the axle to use as spacers um, when I replaced the tires, and that's worked out really well. So uh, the thing that's been hard on this particular tub is it's gotten a lot of use over the years. And I was just at Tractor Supply and I priced out some similar wheelbarrows and they're $170. This one is cracking and it needs some repair. And rather than put out $170 uh, to, to fix these cracks, uh, I put out $26.95 in order to get a plastic welder. And these plastic welders have, I don't know what you call them, staples, I guess you'd call them. And these staples, if you can see, I don't know if you can see that. There you go. Uh, you can see that staple right there. And it runs a current through this staple and it gets red hot. And then you can press it into where the crack is on the wheelbarrow Put it across the grain of the crack and it will toughen up that section so i've got a lot of cracks in this thing uh i must have learned some bad habits from my father he uh i have his wheelbarrow as well which has a ton of cracks in it which i have to fix but dad used to uh, take rocks he'd take uh, uh firewood and he would chuck it 10, 15 feet into the wheelbarrow. And I'm like, it's going to break. It, but it never really did. But over the years, um, he wasn't left with the cracks, but I am. And so uh, I have this wheelbarrow. And uh, as he was getting older, he kept trying to use a single wheelbarrow. And it wasn't as stable. And he dropped a bunch of loads. So I got him one of these for Father's Day. But since he was getting a little older, I got him the smaller model. So he wouldn't try to lift as much because he'd always fill it, overfill it. And so I got him the smaller model. And so uh, he used that for a number of years. It was great Father's Day gift. Uh, Father's Day is tomorrow here. And uh, uh, I was just thinking about that. So I'm going to fix this wheelbarrow. I'm going to fix dad's old wheelbarrow that's out in the yard right now. And uh, uh, I'll put them both back into full service. So let me show you how this all works. Now you can see the staple is mounted right inside there. There are two holes in the ends of those rods. And those, uh, you just put the ends of the staple in there. And you can see, I'm going to give it a little, give it a little trigger pull right here. The light goes on. And you can see it'll get red in a second. There it goes. And it melts right in. And you press it in and just give it a little twist there to twist it into the into the plastic and it comes right out and you can see that it melts right in there and it has those staples sticking up and they are sharp so be careful and that goes right across the crack and so now you do that a bunch of times 
and you'll have your crack fixed. So let's keep going. Well, I did a few. Here, let me just show you. I hold it for five seconds and you can see it start to warm up. There, it glows and you can put it in the crack and it'll melt right in. And then give it a little twist. Take your finger off the trigger and I just learned, hold it there for a few seconds, let the plastic cool and then pull it out. One of these I pulled out too early and it took the plastic with it. So that's a little pro tip, I guess, uh, that you can use. Well, let's keep going. So you can see here that I finished this particular crack. I have uh, some staples down at the end there uh, to prevent it from further cracking and all the way across and down to the end. You can see these staples, if you, I turn the camera to the side, they look like barbed wire, so you definitely got to do something about that. They're very sharp. Um, they give you these uh, little cutters um, in the kit, but those are basically useless. I tried one of those, and then I went to my own diagonal cutters, and uh, those were, uh, uh, they cut them easy enough, but they went flying, and it also left a, just a little stub that you can still touch and cut your finger on. You can see there. So I took my grinder and uh, I ground down a couple of these and that is a much better deal. Um, feels much safer. Um, I could use my nippers that I, I use every once in a while, but those would leave a, uh, uh, a little bit extra. They're not flush cutting. Uh, you can see them over here. I'd use those nippers right there, but uh, they're not flush cutting either. So I grabbed my grinder and uh, that seemed to do it. I'll show you how I did that. Now, when you do all of this, make sure you have your safety goggles on. Here's the one I just did with the nippers. I think I'll, uh, I'll straighten that one out a little. And then I'll go after these. And that feels a lot smoother. It's not the prettiest job in the world, but I think uh, with the melted plastic and the metal in there, but it's definitely gonna give you some transverse strength across that crack so that it will uh, hopefully not continue anymore. I put some... Now you can see I'm throwing up a few little sparks. Good to have some safety glasses on when you're grinding, of course, and uh, uh, try to be as safe as you can. I keep uh, reminding myself of the story where my uh, friend Dan was working in my buddy Pete's uh, um, shop. And Pete, kind of like I have my garage here, is a little bit of a messy shop once in a while, especially when you're working on a lot of different projects. And uh, Dan was doing some welding on the workbench. He'd clear, cleared open a, a spot where he could do some welding. And he was sending up tons of sparks. And uh, Peter said to him, hey, Dan, you're probably going to want to hold off welding there, find a different place. And he said, why? He said, see that machine right in front of you? That's a reloading machine. And he goes, what's that? And he says, it reloads shotgun shells. And he goes, oh, well, what's the problem? He goes, well, that hopper on top of it's full of gunpowder. And uh, so unless you want to blow yourself to kingdom come, you should probably find another place to do welding. And so... Of course, needless to say, Dan moved. But uh, I look around here, I look for gasoline, I look for other things before I start grinding. Always safe uh, not to have combustibles around uh, a place where you're creating sparks. Oh well, back to work. Well, as you can see, it's not the prettiest job in the world. Kind of looks like a little bit of Frankenstein wheelbarrow. But uh, it's solid. And uh, 
I think it's going to hold up. And it certainly beats paying $170, $150 for a new wheelbarrow. So, looks like this job's looking pretty good. Well, it looks like we're done with this project. I got everything, all the uh, staples I ground off. They all feel pretty smooth. Again, not the prettiest job, but functional, which is what's important. So, I'll take this down. Take a look at it. And the inside, I'll tell you what, it is a lot better than it was before. So uh, that'll be the end of this project right here. I'm pretty pleased with the results. Uh, so this is Scott at the XFed Homestead. We'll see you next time.